Today, mortgage stress even higher. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Well, this post covering financing problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, we've updated our modelling based on the latest household surveys. That's to the end of June. And unfortunately, mortgage stress is now considerably higher than previously. So today I want to walk you through our methodology and also the key results. And also I'll show you some of the mapping that we've done to show where the hotspots are. This is, of course, a continuing story. And it's one which will go on developing as the Reserve Bank lifts rates even further. And of course, today we already know that CBA and ANZ have already passed on the uplifts to the variable rate mortgage holders. So the pain is going to get worse. Anyway, let me just start by describing again the basis on which we do our analysis. We use our core market model. And the core market model takes information from our surveys, the rolling 52,000 household surveys. And in that survey, we ask a bunch of questions about household finances, money in, money out. And then we do some modelling on the back of that and use that to drive our overall core market model, which gives us a read at not only the household level, but also rolled up to higher levels across the states and territories as well. And of course, we can slice and dice the data different ways, looking at it from a segment perspective, from a geographic perspective, or indeed any other dimension that we think is important. And just to finish off the discussion about the model, we also look ahead 24 and 36 months in terms of what may be ahead for home prices, and that comes out of the model as well. And if you want more information about that, you're able to get information via our Patreon service, where in fact you can get information for pretty much all of the major postcodes across the country. And just to be precise about that, we look at mortgage stress, the price trajectory, the buying and selling intentions, the migration data, the broader economic data through the core market model. And that allows us then to form some views about things down at a postcode level in terms of the various scenarios and how that may play out. And again, just in passing, I would remind you that I do run a one-to-one -one service. If you want an individual confidential discussion with me, uh, I can't give financial advice, but I can talk about how my data translates down to a given postcode or suburb and look at the underlying trends. And we can look at home price trend data and form a view as to where things may go based on our modeling. And Typically, these conversations take between 30 minutes and an hour, so I book up to an hour. We can do via Zoom or phone. There is a cost involved because of the research and effort that's required to put all the information together. And at the moment, we're booking three to five weeks ahead simply because it's a very popular service. A lot of people are trying to understand what's going on. Anyway, let's look now at the mortgage stress data to the end of June 2022. And we start with mortgage stress. And unfortunately, mortgage stress has now lifted to a 45.2% of household level. That is the highest ever. And I would draw your attention to the fact that there's been a considerable move up, more than 2% higher in the last month. And if you compare that with where we were in February 2020 at 32.9%, or if you go back to 2001, where we were in the 10 to 15 percent range you can see just how much worse things have got so 45.2 percent of households is about 1.6 million households feeling the pain rental stress is also not good at all it's at 46.68 percent and again we've seen a significant acceleration in rental stress quite recently not least because a number of landlords are putting up their rents and of course, people who are in rented accommodation quite often have more limited financial assets behind them anyway. It's also worth noting that the latest data from the RBA shows that the household debt ratio is at 187.2. Now, that's a bit deceiving insofar that it includes all households, whether you have debts or whether you don't have debts, and it also includes SMEs as well. But nevertheless, the recent trend from the middle of 2020 onwards is quite clear that the debt to ratio number 
is going higher, which is actually not a good look. And we actually have one of the highest debt to income ratios in the world. Switzerland may be slightly higher, but then, of course, the Swiss economy is quite unusual. And so the data there might be a little wobbly, to be frank. Anyway, with that introduction, let's go on and look at the specific information relating to this month's data. So this information here is going through the state summary level across all our households. So if we look at the summary across the states, we can see that overall mortgage stress is sitting at 45.19% of households, or 1.69 million households. That the rental stress at 46.68 translates into 2.27 million households. The investor stress, these are property investors, 25.28%, which translates to 773,000 stressed investors. Stressed investors may well be trying to sell their investment property or are unable to find a tenant. Or if they have a tenant, they've got a negative cash flow. And the aggregate financial stress measure, which is effectively an aggregate of those three different elements, is sitting at 44.96%, which means that overall financial stress is touching about 4.7 million households out of the 9.57 million that we estimate to be in Australia at the moment. And what I've also done is highlighted where the values have risen compared with last month. And you can see that this month it's all about mortgage stress, with actually stress rising everywhere. The most stressed state, with 61.37% of households, is in Tasmania. Then you go down to Victoria at 475 Then you can go to South Australia at 4564 then we can go to New South Wales at 43.97, WA at 44.21, and ACT is at 41.13, which is just a little bit higher than Queensland, which is 40.48. In terms of rental stress, it's a bit of a different story. At 57.85% of rental stressed households, New South Wales holds the record. It's 55% in Canberra, and it's a little lower at 47% in Victoria. In terms of investor stress, the ACT actually has the highest proportion of property investors who are not making returns from their investment property. But of course, it's not just there. It's in New South Wales at 32.58%. Victoria is at 24%, which is very close to Queensland. And overall financial stress, the area with the most significant financial stress overall is, and maybe perhaps surprisingly, the ACT at 54.56%. Then we go to New South Wales at 50.45%. Victoria at 45.69%. Queensland at 42%, Tasmania is at 47%, and WA is at 40%. Now we can also look at the data a different way. So this is looking at it by our main household segments. And the first observation, and it's still as true as it was last time, but even more so, unfortunately, young growing families, including many first time buyers, are very significantly exposed to mortgage stress at 81.87%. That's more than 270,000 young growing families. And if we go beyond that, out in the urban fringes and in some of the more disadvantaged areas, we see high numbers and high proportions of households in mortgage stress. I'd also make the point that some more affluent households are also feeling it. So 35% of exclusive professionals, that's our most wealthy segment. And indeed, some young affluents are also there at 17%. But it does also touch mainstream Australia with the suburban mainstream at 38%. And also first generation Australians. These are people who've moved into the country relatively recently. We call those the multicultural establishment group. And also the mature, stable families 
So middle of the road, meat, potatoes, households are also feeling it. If you look at rental stress, the highest amount of rental stress resides amongst multicultural establishment households at 64%, but it's also high among more mature, stable families, as well as on the urban fringe with the battling urban and disadvantaged fringe, and the young affluent and the young growing families. Investor stress is highest among more affluent groups like the exclusive professionals at 45.39% and young affluents at 48.55%. And overall financial stress is highest among the battling urban and also among young growing families, the young affluents, the multicultural establishment, the first generation Australians, as well as more exclusive and upmarket households too. And the takeout from all of this analysis is that stress doesn't just reside in the urban fringe, in the lower socioeconomic areas. It is very prevalent in other areas too, including some of those with very considerable resources behind them. The trouble is they have great resources, maybe, but they also have big debts and their cash flows are being stretched. And let me just pause here just to redefine again mortgage stress because it's very important to understand how we define it. We look at the amount of money coming into a household, the amount of money going out from a household. And if effectively more money is going out than coming in, could be on a rent, could be on a mortgage. We look at all the other outgoings too. But if they're a negative, then effectively we classify them as stressed. The argument is simply this. If in fact you are spending more than is coming in on a regular basis, then you're going to get into difficulty. Now, of course, many people will be able to pull down on deposits or other savings or maybe even use credit cards or buy now, pay later. And we take account of those things in the modelling. But at some point, households get into difficulty unless they fundamentally change their behaviour. And this is, of course, where many households now are insofar that we are seeing some households who are having to really rethink their budgets, really prioritise where they're spending their money, giving up on some luxuries, perhaps not going out to eat so much as previously, maybe cutting back on some of those Netflix subscriptions and other streaming services, maybe reviewing your mobile phone plans, and even more extreme things like, for example, taking kids out of private school and bringing them back into the public system, or indeed even giving up on health care, for example, passing on dental treatment just simply to get by. And of course, it's very important to understand that this mortgage stress scenario and rental stress scenario is very much driven by three things. One, the costs of those particular facilities have gone up. Bigger mortgages mean essentially bigger repayments, particularly as rates go up and the, more, the rents, of course, have come up as well. But secondly, the cost of living have been rising very significantly. The 5.1% official inflation rate just does not really pass muster. And as I've discussed before, there's evidence that if you look at food, for example, some of those costs are more than 20% up from where they were previously. And of course, we can tick off electricity and gas and uh, fuel at the pumps as well. So pretty much wherever you look, costs are going through the roof. And yet, real wages are going nowhere. And many households are continuing to go backwards in real terms. And when you put all that together, that's why we have significant levels of stress in the system. Now, it doesn't mean that they're going to immediately fall over. But what it does mean, they like to change their behaviour, they're going to spend less, that could have an economic impact on the broader economy. But also, it means that they're going to prioritise very carefully what they're going to do and how they're going to handle this. And some households are now beginning to worry about what happens with the next rise and the next rise, because the chances are we're going to see more rate rises in the next few months. I discussed this in more detail yesterday in an earlier post. Now let's go on and look at some of the more detailed information that we have relating to our modelling. I will just here go through the top postcodes for each of our categories of stress. We start with mortgage stress. And the postcode at the moment with the highest count of mortgage stressed households is Narrow Warren. That's postcode 3805 in Victoria. That includes Fountain Gate, Narrow Warren, Narrow Warren South, with more than 10,000 households in mortgage stress. 
Beyond that, we then go to Berwick and Hockaway. That's postcode 3806, just next door, actually. And there are about 9,691 households are estimated to be in mortgage stress. And I will make the point that the thing that really marks these particular household uh, groups out and these postcodes out are high growth corridors, a lot of new building, a lot of relatively new purchases, a lot of first time buyers, a lot of people, first generation migrants buying in the area. And that explains some of the reasons why they've got really big mortgages, they're highly leveraged. In some cases, they've used the government incentive scheme, so they've only got a very small loan to value ratio on their property. And essentially, it gives little wriggle room when things go wrong. It's also quite often the case that people will be working multiple and sometimes part time jobs to try and make ends meet. And we're certainly seeing evidence of more people looking for more work to try and generate a bit more income to try and cover the additional costs. If we go down the list, we then go to Queensland and to Toowoomba and areas around there with more than 9,600 households in stress. That's postcode 4350. Then we come back to Victoria down to Packham and Packham Upper, postcode 3810 with 8,484 households. Then we go to Cranbourne, another Victorian postcode, 3977 and that's with 8,205 estimated in mortgage stress. Then we go to Ballarat East. It's very important to highlight that some of these regional areas are also doing it tough. Postcode 3350 with 7,741 estimated to be in mortgage stress. Then we go to New South Wales, postcode 2567, which includes Mount Annan and Harrington Park, 7,647. Then we go to WA to postcode 6030 to Meriwa, Clarkson, Quinns Rock, Ridgewood, Tamala Park with 7,548. Then we go to Victorian postcode 3037 to Downey, Haleside and Sydenham with 7,357. Then we go to regional New South Wales to South Tamworth, postcode 2340 with 6,745 households in stress. Then we go to Queensland and the areas around Ipswich, postcode 4305 with 6,743. Back to New South Wales, postcode 2770, including places like Lethbridge Park, Mount Druitt, postcode 2770 has 6,737 households more registered as mortgage stressed. And then we go to Derrimont and Point Cook in Victoria, postcode 3030, with more than 6,495 households. So you can definitely see here the continued presence of a lot of high growth corridors, where there's been a lot of new development, a lot of new purchases, a lot of highly leveraged households. But of course, it's also more complicated than that. Some regional areas are also feeling it as well. Now let's now look at rental stress. And here we start with postcode 2540, which is down in the southern coastal area of New South Wales, around Sussex Inlet, and St George's Basin and Sanctuary Point. Now, this is a postcode, of course, that's had considerable issues for quite a long period of time, not least because of all the bushfires. The problem with this area is there's high demand, for example, in Jarvis Bay for property to rent, but almost nothing. And so the rents are very large. And so there's lack of supply costs of rentals are going through the roof and particularly with some destroyed buildings still there not recovered from the bushfires again another reason why the amount of rental accommodation is so small so 11,685 households are in stress then we go to Toowoomba postcode 4350 and once again we find that more than 11,491 households are in rental stress there then we go to Liverpool and Liverpool South Postcode 2170 with 11,434. Then we go to postcode 2770, Lethbridge Park, Mount Druitt, once again, with more than 10,000 households in rental stress. Then we go to Surface Paradise and Main Beach up in Queensland, postcode 4217. Now, people may be surprised, but again, we have the same issues with a high demand, very large rents and significant pressures with more than 10,000 households feeling it at the moment. Then we go to postcode 2145, which includes Westmead and Wentworthville, with more than 10,000 households 
in rental stress. You go to Queensland, postcode 4670, which includes places like Burnett Head, Bundaberg and Moore Park. And there, more than 10,000 households are in difficulty in that regional area. Then we come back to New South Wales, postcode 2560, which includes places like Roos, Rose Meadow and Glen Alpine. But of course, the main suburb is Campbelltown in that particular postcode. And there we've got more than 9,841 households registering in rental stress. Then we go to Western Australia, 6163, including places like Sampson, Spearwood, Hamilton Hill and Bybra Lake, with more than 9,400 in rental stress there. And then we go back to Queensland, postcode 4215, to Labrador and Southport, so again on the Gold Coast, with more than 9,381 households in rental stress. And finally, we go to the Central Coast around Gosford and its surrounds, postcode 2250, with more than 9,000 households in rental stress there. Then briefly, let's just touch on stressed investors. And interestingly, we still have investors in postcode 3000 in Melbourne struggling. That's because the leases and the costs of leasing in the centre of Melbourne are all over the place at the moment. There is a little bit more momentum than previously, but a lot of stressed investors are struggling and some are still trying to sell. Then we go to Beckenham in WA, postcode 6107, with more than the 4,000 there. Then we come into New South Wales to Surrey Hills and Darlinghurst, postcode 2010. And uh, interestingly here, some of the property that's on the market to lease, the economics don't really work for investors. Then we go again to Bundaberg, postcode 4670, with more than 3,600 there. Then we go to Surface Paradise and Main Beach up in Queensland, 4217. Then we go to Hornsby Heights and Hornsby, postcode 2077, a more affluent area, but uh, still significant issues with investment properties. And then we go across to Mandra, postcode 6210. And as you may know, Mandra is an area that I've been watching closely for many years. More than 3,000 stressed investors there still trying to sell properties. Some are still un underwater from an equity perspective. Then we go to St Kilda in Victoria, 3182, with more than 2,947. And then we go to another Queensland postcode, 4551, which includes Calundra and Shelley Beach, with more than 2,899. And then we go down to South Yarra in Victoria, postcode 3141, with more than 2,800 stressed investors. And Wollongong and the surrounds, with more than 2,800 stressed investors in postcode 2500 and postcode 4655 up in Queensland with more than 2,853 stressed investors. And finally, then we put it all together looking at financial stress and the postcode that comes out with the most financial stress across all of our dimensions is Victorian postcode 3000. Then we go to Mount Druitt and Lethbridge Park with postcode 2770 and more than 19,000 households in financial stress. Then we go across to Bundaberg with more than 17,800 in financial stress. Cranbourne and Cranbourne South in Victoria with more than 17,700. Then we go to Western Australian postcode 6107, which includes Wilson, Beckenham, Cannington, Kenwick, with more than 17,200. And postcode 3030, Point Derriment, Point Cook and Werribee, with more than 16,800. And Ipswich, at 16,599 households in financial stress, postcode 4305. And you can see there the rest if you want to go down the list. And I would highlight, just near the bottom, more Victorian postcodes, Fountain Gate, Narrowarren, Berwick and Harkaway, Hoppers Crossing, and Craigieburn and Middleham in Roxburgh Park. A very significant swathe in the Victorian suburbs. So that's given you a bit of a flavour of what we are seeing on the ground. 
And this, of course, is based on the latest analysis that we've done. So we might now have a quick look at the maps and you can see there how stress is represented. So this is the Melbourne area. And once again, I'll highlight that the ready numbers are the most stressed counts of households. And so you can see this big area beyond Greater Dandelong here. And you can see the area around Point Cook, Werribee, and to the north as well. So Melbourne is surrounded by considerable amounts of mortgage stress. And if you were to pull out further, you'd also see that some of those regional areas that we mentioned is also showing up. Here's the Ballarat postcode that I mentioned earlier on. Now, if we switch over to Brisbane, and once again, it's quite clear that some of the areas to the west of Brisbane, like around Ipswich and to the north of Brisbane, are where some of the pain points are. And also down towards the Gold Coast, there's quite a considerable footprint. Of course, the total population base is different to, say, Sydney and Melbourne. So the number in the red zone, as it were, will be lower. But nevertheless, we can certainly see that there are pockets of stress in and around the areas of Brisbane. So here is now Greater Sydney. And of course, the most obvious and striking feature here for mortgage stress are the high number of households from Campbelltown through Liverpool, Fairfield, Blacktown, up round to Cumberland and Parramatta, and uh, even up into the hills as well. There are also a few hotspots closer in, but nowhere near the representation that we have over in the West. So mortgage stress and the story of mortgage stress in Greater Sydney is definitely concentrated in some particular areas. If we then go to Adelaide and just look at the situation there, one of the most striking features is the area to the north of Adelaide, north of Salisbury, postcode 5108 and in those sort of areas, and also to the south of the city and further down too. Again, the overall counts are lower, but nevertheless there are some significant hotspots. And interestingly, mortgage stress is certainly deteriorating in these areas because of the much higher home prices compared with two or three years ago. And if we jump across to Perth, we can again see the same story with the centre of Perth not doing too badly. But if you go north and south of Perth, particularly close to the coast, you can see considerable issues with large numbers of households in some difficulty. And this is, of course, despite the so-called recovery of the property market in the West. Well, maybe, but a lot of people bought in with very small deposits and very large mortgages and have properties which are really uh, difficult to service at the moment. So I expect to see stress levels in the West continuing to rise. But this is the area around Hobart. And, of course, the total counts are a lot lower compared with some of the other postcodes that we've looked at. But nevertheless, there are considerable pockets of difficulty in the around Hobart and also up in the north uh, of Tasmania as well. And one of the worrying trends here is that the costs of housing relative to incomes has become even more extreme than almost any other centre across the country. That's going to be a concern later with interest rates continuing to rise. And here is the data for the Darwin area. Again, very low counts, but a few small pockets like Palmerston, for example, where there are definitely some issues and those issues are definitely emerging. And interestingly, in the Northern Territory, Alice Springs stands out as one of the most stressed areas in the Northern Territory. And finally, I will just include the ACT in this story because there are some postcodes in and around the centre of Canberra and there are because there are some areas outside of the centre of Canberra where there are levels of mortgage stress and it's rising quite fast. That again is a combination of high rentals and high mortgages and incomes not really growing that fast for many people. So then just before I sign off on this one, I would just make the three points that I always make. 
Mortgage stress and rental stress is a big deal, and households need to take some responsibility of themselves for, for dealing with it. The first is that many people don't actually have a cash flow sense of where the money is coming from and where is it going to. So I always say to people, drop a cash flow, keep a record of what you're spending and what you're receiving so that you know where things are going and so you can prioritise. And uh, the ASIC Smart Money website has some very good tools to help people drop a budget. Once you've done the, that, you can then prioritise and select, maybe look at the expenditure profile quite cautiously and carefully and say, well, where could I skinny back a bit? The second point is that a lot of people are assuming that wages are going to really start taking off and that will get them out of jail. I see no evidence of that yet happening. Whilst a few people are able to move jobs and get bigger incomes and pay rises might be moving up slightly, it's all being eaten up with rising costs. Therefore, don't expect a miracle to appear and suddenly your problems will be solved. That's not the way it's going to work this time. It did look good at that in the early 2000s, but not now. Third point is, if you have a mortgage and if you've got difficulty with your mortgage repayments, it's worth talking to your bank quite early because they do have an obligation to assist when it comes to dealing with hardship. Now, those conversations can be quite uncomfortable and in some cases the bank is now starting to put pressure on people to sell their properties, perhaps earlier than previously, in earlier cycles because the last thing they want to do is to start reporting higher delinquency rates. So that's something to bear in mind. But it is worth having a conversation with them. They may be able to help with restructuring the loan or making repayments a little bit more affordable. But just be cautious with extending the term because it just means you're going to pay more interest over a longer period of time. And if your overall circumstances are likely to change in the short term, things are probably going to get worse rather than better. So it's worth having that conversation very early on. And by the way, don't just assume that by grabbing more credit cards or more buy now pay later facilities you can get through what happens is you end up with more debt less easy to manage and ultimately the stress levels go even higher so talk to your lender and shop around of course is the other thing to say because many people still have a mortgage with a higher rate than the best in the marketplace never understood this but the amount of refinancing that's going on at the moment is remarkably high Many people are now, for the first time, really looking for those low rates. They do still exist. So get a refinance sorted out. The refinancing process is not that hard. You can do a lot of it online. And it's a relatively quick and painless process these days. So it's definitely worth looking at that. And I think the final thing I would highlight is that knowing where interest rates are likely to rise to and knowing that we're going to see cost of living continue to get into a more difficult situation with higher inflation, at least for the next few months, probably longer. You need to take a strategic view of your finances. And there will be some people realising that they will not be able to manage what they've currently got on their plate. And harder decisions, selling a property or looking for a lodger, or those sorts of things, may be necessary to be able to lay a foundation for the next few months. In other words, don't just wait until the train hits, but start planning now for higher rates and for those people who have buffers and there's about a third of households who do and are doing very well that's good news for them but of course there's still a third of households who essentially are living paycheck to paycheck and are making this very hard for them now with all of the cost of living rising and everything else and again i'd caution against the natural inclination to just go grab some credit just getting more credit is not necessarily a good answer so I hope that was of some use. If you would like more specific information about a particular postcode, we do have our one-to-one -one service, as I mentioned earlier on. And I thought I'd just end with showing you what the tool looks like when you actually look at a particular postcode. So this is the tool that is available online and also for download if you actually sign up at Patreon. And I've just put a postcode here, postcode 2000, simply because that was the one that it came up as a default. And the information that's included here are the number of households, the borrowing proportion of households, those renting and those investing. And then we have the number of borrowers in mortgage stress, the number of renters in rental stress, the number of stressed investors, and the overall aggregate measure of households in financial stress. 
And we also have information with regard to the scenarios. This is based on our modeling and our different scenarios. So the best, the base and the worst case scenario. And we look at houses and units separately. So in this particular example, we are we are suggesting that the best case is a small fall over the next three years. But the worst case for houses is a considerable fall, more than 46%. The base case is somewhere in the middle. Units, the best case is a small fall, about 2.9%. The worst case is down about 34%. And if I put another postcode in here, let's go down to Wollongong, area that I know very well, of course. Well, here we can see that of the proportion of households, around 14% are in mortgage stress, but rental stress is extremely high and investor stress is high. And the proportion of households in stress is pretty high too, overall financial stress that is. And in terms of scenarios, the best case scenario for houses is over the next three years. Well, a small area of growth, but not for the first couple of years. These are cumulative totals, so 4.2%. The worst case is a fall of 38%, and the base case is a correction down about 20% over three years. And for units, the best case scenario is a small rise of about 3% over three years. The base case down 14% and the worst case down about 28%. And I also have information in this model about the growth investment returns within the postcode and also the net investment returns. In other words, how much people are actually making after taking account of all the various costs that they have relating specifically to their investment property. And no surprise that we've got so many stressed investors given the fact that net investment returns are on average just 0.1%, which is not very good at all. And I will just go to another postcode. Thought I'd go across to my old favourite, Mandra. And interestingly there, the proportion of households in mortgage stress has dropped way back from where it was. The rental stress is at 38%, investor stress is at 29%. And the households in financial shares overall at 38%, so it's quite a lot lower. And over the next three years, there's definitely an upside potential of maybe up to 13% cumulative over the next three years for houses and for units up 9%. The base case is a small fall, maybe down 11% over three years, or down about 8% for units. The worst case scenario then is a fall of 29% or 21% for units. And I'll highlight here that the gross investment return is coming at about 4.1%. The net investment return is only 0.8%. So many households are still definitely doing it tough. And finally, I'll just go to Adelaide because Adelaide is definitely behaving differently from some of the other suburbs and postcodes. And in postcode 5010, which includes Angel Park, Ferry Dean Park and Regency Park, you can see there that the mortgage stress is at 30.8%, the rental stress is at 60%, stressed invest is at 37%, and the households in financial stress at 51.8%. And in terms of the projections from here, houses could be up by 10% over the next three years, best case scenario. The base case is down 13%, or the worst case is down about 32%. And for units, the best case is about 8%, the base case is down 10%, and the worst case is down 23.8 percent but it is interesting to note that even here the gross nest the gross investment returns are around four percent the net investment returns are only 0.4 percent so even in these suburbs which have been ostensibly portrayed as very very strong are also of some concern finally i thought we'd just look at point cook deramont werribee where we have 29% of mortgage borrowers in stress, we have 53% of renters in rental stress, and the proportion of stressed investors at 23% with financial stress over at 42%. But the point there, of course, is we have significant numbers of households in mortgage stress because of the high household count. And from a scenario's perspective, we see houses potentially best case rising by 8.4% over three years. Well, maybe that's the best case.
the base case is down 15.8% over three years, or worst case, down about 35.3% over three years. And units, the best case, 6.1% over three years. The base case down 12%. The worst case down 25.8%. The gross investment returns in this postcode are 3.2%. And the average net investment return is minus 0.2%. So many property investors are doing it tough at the moment. And that's one of the reasons why we are seeing higher listings in that particular postcode. So if you'd like to have more information about a particular postcode, you can, of course, sign up via our Patreon. I'll put the links and things below. And you can get access to this information each and every month. And the online tool also allows you to compare one month with another month and one postcode with another postcode to be able to get a sense of how different suburbs are moving. So in conclusion then, Mortgage stress continues to rise. Rental stress continues to rise. Interest rates will put more pressure on households ahead. And therefore, it's very important that households start preparing and planning now for these higher costs of living and these higher costs of mortgage and rental payments. I'm afraid that we're going to see stress levels rising even higher. So when I report next month, don't be surprised to see an even bigger number. Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultants standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high, price discovery and price transparency are hard to find, and then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au and if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.